I'm standing in front of one of the most infamous man-made structures in the world. In some places, it's as high as eight meters, making it twice the height of the Berlin Wall. It runs 280 miles long, basically the distance between Philadelphia and Boston. It's been under construction for the past 13 years, and it's still not done. Oh, and according to the International Court of Justice, this wall is completely illegal. I'm in the occupied West Bank, where Palestinians have been living under Israeli military occupation since 1967. The wall is one of the most imposing parts of that occupation. Israel began building the wall in the early 2000s during a wave of suicide bombings that targeted Israelis. The Israeli government calls it the separation barrier or the security fence and says the aim is to keep out Palestinian attackers. But thousands of Palestinians still manage to get across every day looking for work. So if the wall doesn't stop people from crossing, then what does it do? Let's take a look at the root of the wall. You'd think a wall meant to stop people from entering its territory would be built on Israel's border. But 85% of it is inside the occupied West Bank on Palestinian land. International law says it's illegal to build settlements like these on occupied territory. But this is one of over 200 settlements and settler outposts housing half a million Israelis in the occupied West Bank. Technically, these settlers live outside of Israel proper, but the wall has shifted the boundary between Israel and the West Bank to swallow up more Palestinian land. When the wall is completed, an area the size of Chicago will have been added to the Israeli side of the wall. While settlers who live west of the wall are full Israeli citizens with rights and benefits, the Palestinians who live in that same territory have none. This is the village of Daba near Qalqilya. It's just one of many Palestinian villages that lost at least half of its land to the wall. Israel used dynamite to clear the path for the wall, damaging homes and the local school. In some parts, the wall is made of concrete, and in other parts, it's fencing, depending on the proximity to Palestinian homes. I'm standing at a gate that Israel only opens once a year to allow villagers to harvest their olives, which was once their main source of livelihood. What happens when the wall cuts right through a neighborhood? This entire Palestinian village called Hizma has been walled off from the rest of Jerusalem, except for the homes of a couple of Palestinian families that got stuck on the Israeli side of the wall. And people here aren't even allowed to go visit their old neighbors. Hizma is technically part of Jerusalem, meaning it's on Israel to provide the villagers services like trash pickup and security. But it doesn't, and the villagers are basically forced to fend for themselves. You'd think the biblical city of Bethlehem would have a booming tourism industry. But here, you can find one of the clearest examples of how the wall has devastated the Palestinian economy. Many businesses have shut down and families have left. When it's completed, Bethlehem will be completely cut off from its agricultural land, its churches, and more. The wall, along with a series of illegal Israeli settlements, are physically strangling the city and it can't expand. And because of the wall, most Palestinians coming from Bethlehem cannot take this road to nearby Jerusalem. You can only get through this checkpoint if you have a special permit, which most Palestinians can't get. So there you have it. This wall, a fixture of the occupation, has destroyed neighborhoods, strangled the economy, and illegally grabbed more Palestinian land. Palestinians call it the apartheid wall. And the question is, how long will it stand?